Today we're going to be talking about the first five things you must do when you buy your Switch OLED. So welcome back to the channel. My name's Andy and this is 128KB. Make sure to go and check out our Switch OLED unboxing video if you haven't already, as well as our Metroid Dread Special Edition unboxing too. And there's loads more videos coming their way, so make sure you stick around. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do when you buy your brand new Switch OLED, and this mainly applies to those that are upgrading from a previous Switch, whether that's a Switch Lite or a Redbox Switch or a 2017 Switch, which is what I did make sure that you system transfer. So you want to transfer your user account onto the new Switch. And that's not the only thing that you want to transfer either. If you're an Animal Crossing player already and you've been playing on a Switch Lite or a previous Switch console of any kind, well then the Animal Crossing Island is actually bound to that Switch. So once you've transferred your user data, don't format that switch and give it away or whatever because you're not done yet. You need to then transfer your Animal Crossing data over to the new switch because annoyingly it doesn't back up to cloud save on your Nintendo Online account. Luckily for you, we've got an entire video which is all about that. So it's literally a how-to guide on how to transfer everything over from one switch to another. And this applies just not to the OLED but to any switch of any kind, whether you're going from an OLED to a Switch Lite or Switch to Switch or whatever. So make sure you check out that video as well. Okay, so the second tip that you absolutely have to do, really, especially if you're planning on buying digital games, is you will need to install an SD card to expand your storage. Because yes, the Switch OLED has 64 gigabytes now instead of the 32, which is seen on previous Switches, but 64 gig still isn't that much. So I highly recommend that you go and buy yourself a new SD card, and especially a fast one. So these, you know, you can find all over the place, but don't just go and buy any old SD card. Go and watch our videos. We've got a video dedicated to this on how to choose the right SD card, what speeds to look out for, because you want to make sure that it's fast enough to run games and for the Switch to actually be compatible with it. Uh, it's more about the read speed than the write speed. So the write speed is just how long it will take for games to download and install onto the actual SD card. But it's all about the read speed because that's how quickly the Switch is gonna read that data and let you play the games. So make sure you check out our video, which is about the SD card and that will help you to expand your storage. Number three is quite an important one, especially if you want to keep your OLED looking nice. <laughs> so if we go top down, then we have a lovely, beautiful black screen here now, which is glass. So you can see it's hyper reflective. And we do have that gloss edging around the sides, which if you watched our unboxing video, you'll see more about that. But anyway, we do have that nice glass. Um, you might not be able to see this, but there is actually a screen protector already on the glass. However, this isn't really there for protecting the screen as such. It's more there to stop the glass from shattering if the glass actually breaks. So do not, whatever you do, do not remove this. So even if you're going to install another screen protector, don't take off the one that's already there. Just leave it be, because that's going to protect your Switch just overall. So if you are going to buy a screen protector, then just stick it over the top. I myself have gone for these ones. So we've got the Orsley, which are just here, and they are specifically for the Switch OLED. It comes in a pack of four and you get a lifetime guarantee as well. And these are premium tempered glass. Now this brand, I'm not too sure if it's overly familiar with people, but I have bought my screen protectors from these before for my previous Switches and for the Switch Lite. So we've got a, a standard 2017 Switch as well as a Switch Lite. And we bought them from this company and we've not had any problems at all. It's crystal clear, no issue with fogging or anything like that that and you get four in a pack and in the UK here these were about £12 so that's about £3 a piece when you think of a pack of four. Obviously if you've got some friends or something you could split a pack but I myself I'm just going to keep them as backup but I will be installing this very soon after we've made some more videos but yeah I highly recommend that you get yourself a screen protector. Obviously if you can find them from different brands or whatever go for it especially if they're a better price but per
personally, I know that this brand has been good to me in the past, so that's this tip. Do not uninstall or peel off the screen protector that's already on the Switch OLED, and make sure you go and get yourself a, a screen protector to go on top of that as well. So that's just gonna help protect your screen because it's such a nice screen and it would be devastating to ruin it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Okay, so number four, this is number four on our list of five. We're getting near the end and I might even have a bonus for you at the very end as well. But number four is to make your dock safe. So what I mean by that is the Switch dock is sort of known for scratching those screens. So obviously we've just talked about getting a screen protector, which is going to help that. And also the new Switch OLED dock actually has tiny little rubber pieces at the bottom to sort of space off the screen a bit from the plastic but there still is going to be that chance that you're going to scratch the screen because it is plastic on that glass. So we have made, again, a DIY hack video to make your dock 100% safe. It works every time, so I recommend that you go and watch that. And what we do is actually modify the dock itself, and it only costs about 50p to do this. And what we do is we place things inside to space the screen off of the plastic and to ensure that it never scratches again. And again, it takes about five minutes to do and it costs almost nothing. So make sure you go and check out our DIY hack video on how to make your Switch dock 100% safe. Okay, so number five on our list of five things you must do is check your screen settings. So one thing you might notice if we go top down, is if we open up the switch, there we go. When you get the switch, it has automatic brightness on. Now, because we have a blinding light over there on, it's so bright, you probably won't notice the difference. However, some people are complaining that the screen brightness really isn't that much better than their previous switches. And that is because of when you hold down the home menu and you get the quick like menu up, there is an automatic brightness setting. Now with automatic brightness on, what that's going to do is dim the screen to make sure that that OLED panel sort of has the best life possible. So it is recommended to use it. However, if you're just going to be playing for a bit and you want the best brightness, or maybe you're somewhere like outside or somewhere where you just want a bit more brightness, well then go and hold the home button, which is just here, hold the home button, and go down to automatic brightness and turn that off. And then what you can do is you can adjust the brightness of the screen this way, and when you go full, it will make a difference. So you might not see it here, but I can see it very slightly just changing brightness. But when you don't have a massive studio light like that on, it's really quite noticeable how much brighter the screen is. But like I said, if you do have automatic brightness off, then this may increase the risk of burning over time at least. But to be honest, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And like I said, if you're in a situation where it's not bothering you, then just turn that automatic brightness on and you'll be fine. But if you want that bit more boost, then turn it off. Now there is another thing as well. Inside the settings on the Switch OLED, we do have another setting now. If we go to settings and we scroll all the way down to system, and then we go down, 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 down. And then somewhere around here, we've got display console screen vividness. Now what this does is it changed the screen from being ultra vivid to just sort of standard. But the Switch OLED, because it's an OLED screen and it creates far more contrast, they're trying to make it pop even more by sort of oversaturating the colors. Now in some games, maybe like Splatoon, it might look a little bit odd, might look too saturated, where colors are just too colorful, too bright, if that makes sense. I don't know why some people would think that's a bad thing, but until you experience it yourself, it could be a bad thing. So just go to home. Like I said, I'll show you again. So you go to the settings and go all the way down to system. And then what we do is go down and there is one called color, uh, sorry, console screen vividness. And then you can just go to standard and what that would do would just mute the colors down a little bit, drop the saturation down a little bit, and that might make you personally have a better experience. Now, for me personally, I quite like that high contrast look and high saturation look that OLED screens offer in general. So for me personally, I'm just gonna put it back on. So console screen vividness, and I'm gonna go to vivid, just like that. 
and there we go. That's how I like my Switch to be. However, I have seen people online complaining about how dim the screen is and how oversaturated it is as well. So that is how you can fix that issue. Now, lastly, as a bonus number six tip, let's go for that, not number 10. <laughs> number six is get yourself a grip. So obviously this is an older grip. This is a Satisfy Zen Grip Pro. We have got a review of this over on our channel, but this is actually for the 2017 Switch, you know, the original switch so not the switch OLED however they are launching the switch OLED version now obviously being an OLED screen the OLED is actually designed for handheld use because you know you're playing it in your hands <laughs> and what some people find including me is I get slightly numb hands after a while from playing it just because you've kind of got to I find myself propping the screen up with my pinkies so when I'm sat like this my pinkies sort of hold the weight of the console because then I'm sort of pressing the buttons around the side here because I find gripping it like this isn't very comfortable. So I prop my fingers underneath and that helps me hold the switch up into a more comfortable position for my thumbs. However, what the Zen grip or other grips do is they shift your hands out, which then puts grips in your palm. So if I grab the grip, you can see how my hands are flared out at an angle, almost like this. And that gives you better reach for the thumbsticks as opposed to this where your hands are sort of crunched in as if your elbows are really tight to your body. You want, you want your hands to be out a bit more so that you can get to those thumbsticks and buttons a bit more. So what I do recommend is that you get yourself a grip. Now, like I said, that is uh, the Zen Grip Pro from Satisfy and they are making one for the Switch OLED. If not, then the other one that I'd recommend is the brand new one from Skull & Co. They have also made a brand new grip for the Switch OLED, which looks excellent and I will be buying one at some point once they're available here in the UK because otherwise I've got to import them from America and it just takes far too long and it costs even more money and blah 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 blah. But anyway, as it's a handheld console first and sort of like a home system second, I highly recommend that you get yourself a grip when you can do so. So that has been our video on our top five or really six things you absolutely must do when you get your Switch OLED. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope some of those tips have been handy for you. If they have, let me know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe and like this video because it really helps us out as a small channel and make sure to check out our website 128kb.co.uk. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.